Good morning, guys. How are we doing this morning? I want to show you a couple things. Let's start here. There's a possibility that he might. So I found this video um, off of Anthony Greeno's page, and it's how this guy talking about. Again, there's probably about he probably has about 50 reenactments of the crime, which is odd. But again, so we have this gentleman on here talking about bruising on the girl's arms and hands from falling. That's that is one of those things that at, at another channel AA AA has above so below talks about. Anyways, that uh, how he knows how Greeno puts out like. Um, He'll throw out some information that no one else has on our channel just to get more views or, you know, just to catch tensions or whatnot, what have you. This is one of those instances. I can show a few, but this is one of the more unnerving ones to me that is, again, if there's anything to do with bruising on these hands or anything, or again, were the arms uncovered during the funeral? If they weren't, then again, this is only something really the killer would know. I um talked to, the, I have a medical examiner in my family, and I'm, um, you have what's called post-mortem lividity. Settling of the blood after death, okay? This usually takes between 8 and 12 hours, okay? To start purpling the color of the body. If it's not, um, the blood's not taken out properly, whatever, what have you. Uh, so you have postmortem lividity or hypostasis is the settling of blood under the influence of gravity, which develops in the early postmortem intervals. Okay, and it it develops in the early postmortem interval of lividity. So anyway, so that happens in the first eight twelve hours. Um, if we do the math again, about. There would only be a, a window of time, probably two hours after to about 3 a.m. Maybe 4, 5 a.m. And then, and then you would start getting kicking in a post-mortem lividity or hypostasis would start to take place, okay? And you wouldn't see any bruising at that point. So how the fuck did these people see bruising on these girls? This is a, something only the killer would know. It, it, it is. I walked them up this gravel road, got to this point, and that's where he said down the hill. And as they came down the hill, he lost his footing. He fell. Maybe they saw an opportunity to get away and made a break for it and took off running ran down to the riverbank where all the stone is, fell. Um, I've heard, I don't know, but I've heard that their fingers uh, were. See him look off to the side when he said, I don't know, I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Bruised up, that their arms were bruised. And just walking on these stones down here is very difficult. You know, what is the plausibility that they made a break for it to get away as they were running? Do you see how? In his eyes, as he's explaining a theory or explaining what he feels is true, he's very on point with the, his eyesight. He's looking the same way as he's saying they fell and got bruising. They fell into this gravel, bruised up their hands and arms, got up, and were See? going across the river. But at that point, he was able to catch up with them. And the possibility that maybe he brought them, he was planning on whether he was going to sexually assault them or kill them, whatever, he was planning on doing it here. And they made a break for it, and so he had to alter his plan, and that's why they ended up on the other side of the river. Who is this guy? 